I found myself sprawled on the chilly kitchen floor, clutching my side where sharp waves of pain reverberated through my body. It felt as though a knife were twisting inside me. Nearby, my seven-year-old daughter Lily stood, her small face etched with fear. Mommy, are you okay? Lily's voice quivered, barely above a whisper. Despite the agony, I attempted to sound reassuring. I'll be fine, honey, just a bad stomach ache, I lied, masking the severity of my pain. Footsteps echoed through the hallway, and my husband David appeared in the doorway. His expression was one of annoyance rather than concern, suitcase in hand for his upcoming trip. What's going on, Evelyn? Why are you on the floor? David asked, his voice tinged with irritation. I think it's appendicitis, David. It's really bad. We need to go to the hospital. I managed to gasp out, each word punctuated by pain. He scoffed at me, dismissing it as an overreaction. Appendicitis. You're probably overreacting. It's likely just indigestion, he retorted. But David, I really think. My words were cut off by a sharp jolt of pain, causing me to wince. David checked his watch, impatience palpable. I can't miss this trip with Rachel. Just call a taxi or something. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. David, I can't even move. Lily's here. I need you, I pleaded, desperation lacing my voice. He shook his head, unmoved. I'm sure it's nothing. Call if it gets worse. With that, he left, his suitcase trailing behind him. Alone in pain with Lily, her small hands found mine, her tears mirroring my own. Mommy, don't be sick. You have to be okay, she pleaded. Gathering what little strength I had, I pulled Lily close. I'm here, darling. Mommy's here. With David out of the picture, I knew I had to take action. Shaking hands fumbled for my phone, and I dialed the only person I could count on, my brother Michael. The phone rang, its sound echoing in the quiet kitchen. Hello. Michael's voice was a beacon of hope. Michael, it's Evelyn. I need help. I think it's appendicitis. I can't move, and Lily is frightened. I said, each word a struggle. There was a brief stunned silence. Then Michael's voice, steady and strong, came through. I'm coming right now. Hold on, Evelyn. I'll be there as soon as I can. Leaning back against the cold tile, I closed my eyes, trying to keep the pain at bay. Lily cuddled up to me, her presence a small comfort in that moment. A resolve formed within me. David's abandonment in my time of need would not be forgotten. It was a deep cut, a betrayal marking the beginning of a change. As I waited for Michael, one thing was clear, things would never be the same. Ensuring change became my mission as I lay in the hospital bed, surrounded by sterile white walls and the comforting soft peeps of machines. The appendicitis surgery had been successful, yet the emotional wound inflicted by David's abandonment remained painfully raw. I had reached out to my parents to care for Lily during my recovery, their voices filled with concern and unspoken questions about David's absence. Three days later, back home, the physical pain lingered as a dull reminder of the recent ordeal. Lily's face brightened at my return, her innocent question about my well-being tugging at my heart. I'm getting there, sweetie, I replied, hugging her tightly and grateful for her presence. The calmness of our reunion was shattered the next day as the front door banged open. David and his sister Rachel stormed in, their voices raised in frustration. David's accusation about the inconvenience of not being picked up reverberated in the living room. I felt a surge of anger at his audacity. Welcome back, I said coldly, meeting David's gaze with a glare. His surprised pause indicated he hadn't anticipated my icy reception. Even Rachel seemed taken aback by the tension in the room. What's with the attitude, Evelyn? David demanded. Unable to hold back any longer, I unleashed my pent-up frustration. While you were off enjoying your trip, I was in the hospital, I said, my voice steady but seething with anger. And you, Rachel, always demanding David's time without a thought for his family. David and Rachel's bewildered expressions prompted me to continue. It's not just about being okay, David. It's about being there when your family needs you. Before he could respond, the living room door opened, revealing Michael, our parents, 
and David's parents. Fourteen eyes fixed on David and Rachel, filled with varying degrees of anger and disappointment. Why is everyone here? David's voice faltered, his confidence waning under their collective glare. Taking a deep breath, I channeled my pain and betrayal into words. You left me and Lily alone when we needed you the most. I've told everything to both our families. David seemed to shrink under the weight of my words, his usual bravado nowhere in sight as his eyes darted around, seeking an ally. However, he found none. It's not just about this one incident, David, my brother Michael added, his tone laced with disappointment. Rachel, usually confident, looked uncomfortable, her gaze shifting from the floor to the angry faces around her. David tried to defend himself, his words a mix of excuses and feeble attempts at justification. The confrontation was intense, the air thick with tension. For me, it was a turning point. I realized I couldn't continue living in the shadow of David's neglect. It was time for change, time for me to stand up for myself and Lily. The meeting ended with no resolution, but the message was clear. I had the support of both our families, and David's careless facade had been shattered. As they left, David's parents gave me a look of sympathy, a silent acknowledgement of their son's failings. That night, as I lay in bed, the events of the day replayed in my mind. I felt a mix of emotions, anger, disappointment, but also a newfound strength. David had shown his true colors, and it was time for me to take control of my life. The days following the confrontation were heavy with unspoken words and tension. David tried to act as if nothing had changed, but the air between us was thick with the unsaid. I spent those days reflecting, realizing the depth of my unhappiness and the need for change. The decision I came to wasn't easy but it felt necessary, like a breath of fresh air in a long stifled room. One evening, as David sat on the couch nonchalantly flipping through TV channels, I walked up to him, a folder in my hand. My heart was pounding, but my resolve was firm. David, we need to talk, I said, my voice steady. He glanced up, a flicker of annoyance crossing his face. What now, Evelyn? I took a deep breath and handed him the folder. I want a divorce. David stared at me, his expression a mix of disbelief and mockery. Divorce? Don't be ridiculous, Evelyn. You're overreacting. I shook my head, feeling a sense of empowerment growing within me. It's not an overreaction. I've thought about this a lot. You've constantly put Rachel and your needs before me and Lily. I can't live like this anymore. David's face twisted into a sneer. You think you can manage on your own? Don't be naive, Evelyn. His words were meant to wound, but I stood my ground. I'm not naive, David. I'm aware of what this means, but I'd rather face that uncertainty than continue feeling invisible in my own marriage. He laughed, a cold and harsh sound. Good luck, Evelyn. You'll come crawling back once you realize how hard it is out there. I felt my anger rising but kept my composure. I won't. This is my decision, and I'm sticking to it. For a moment, David looked like he might argue further, but then he shrugged, an arrogant smirk on his face. Fine, have it your way. That night, I couldn't help but feel a sense of vindication. The warning I had issued to David months ago had proven true. As he turned back to the TV, dismissing me once again, I experienced a mix of emotions. There was fear, yes, but also a liberating sense of freedom. Finally, I was taking control of my life, stepping out of the shadows. The next day, I initiated the legal proceedings for the divorce. It was a daunting process, filled with paperwork and legalities, but I was determined. My parents and Michael were supportive, offering help and encouragement during this challenging time. David's true character became even more apparent. He was dismissive and uncooperative, trying to intimidate me into backing down. However, I stood firm, bolstered by the support of my family and the growing realization of my own strength. As the days passed, David's facade began to crumble. The charming, confident man I had married was revealed to be selfish and manipulative, his true colors exposed for all to see. The divorce proceedings were tough, but I faced them head-on, 
each step forward a testament to my newfound resolve. I was no longer the woman who lay on the kitchen floor, ignored and in pain. I was a woman reclaiming her life, dignity, and happiness. The divorce was a grueling process marked by David's attempts to undermine and belittle me at every turn. He would often sneer during our meetings, making snide remarks about my capabilities as a mother and my future without him. But his words, once so debilitating, now only fueled my determination to break free from his toxic grasp. Enjoy your life of struggle, Evelyn, David taunted during one of our final meetings. You'll soon realize how good you had it with me. His arrogance was infuriating, but I kept my composure. I'd rather struggle every day than spend another moment with someone who has so little regard for his family, I retorted, my voice unwavering. David's smug expression faltered for a moment, replaced by a flash of anger. He quickly masked it with a scoff, but I could tell my words had hit their mark. The day the divorce was finalized, I felt a strange mix of relief and apprehension. I was free from David, but the journey ahead was daunting. Yet, as I walked out of the courthouse, a sense of liberation washed over me. I was ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead. In the weeks that followed, David's life began to unravel. His neglectful behavior and the divorce became the talk of his workplace. Colleagues who once admired him now looked at him with a mix of pity and disdain. His charming facade had crumbled, revealing the pettiness and selfishness beneath. Word of our divorce and the reasons behind it spread through our community, thanks largely to my cousin, a well-known figure in our neighborhood. David, who had always prided himself on his image and reputation, found himself the subject of whispered conversations and judgmental glances. Rachel, too, faced her share of backlash. Her interference in our marriage was now public knowledge, and friends and neighbors began to view her with suspicion and disapproval. The once unbreakable bond she shared with David was strained and awkward. One evening, while picking up Lily from school, I overheard a heated argument between David and Rachel outside their house. Their voices were laced with blame and resentment. It's your fault we're in this mess, Rachel yelled, her frustration evident. How dare you blame me? You're the one who couldn't keep your family together, David shot back, his voice high with anger. Their argument was a stark contrast to the united front they once presented. The seeds of discord sown by their actions have finally borne fruit, and they were now reaping the consequences. As I walked away with Lily that night, I couldn't help but feel a sense of vindication. I felt a sense of vindication. David and Rachel were finally facing the repercussions of their selfishness. It was a harsh lesson, but one they had brought upon themselves. That night, as Lily slept peacefully in her room, I sat by the window, reflecting on the past few months. The journey had been difficult, but it had led me to a place of strength and self-respect. I had fought for my dignity and for Lily's future, and though the road ahead was uncertain, I was ready for whatever came next. I felt prepared to face it with newfound confidence. In the aftermath of the divorce, life settled into a new rhythm, one that was quieter but more fulfilling. The shackles of my unhappy marriage were gone, replaced by a newfound sense of independence. I started to rebuild my life, piece by piece, with Lily by my side. My first step was to secure a job. The gap in my resume due to years dedicated to motherhood was a concern, but I was determined. After several interviews, I landed a position at a small accounting firm. The firm was run by a woman who believed in supporting working mothers, and the environment was understanding and flexible, a perfect fit for me. Lily adapted to the changes with the resilience that only children possess. She started kindergarten, her days filled with new friends and learning. Her laughter and chatter filled our home with joy, a stark contrast to the tense silence that had pervaded it before. But the echo of my past with David was not completely silenced. One afternoon, while dropping Lily off at school, I overheard a group of parents whispering, That's her, Evelyn. Heard her husband left her because he couldn't stand being around her anymore. Their words stung, but I held my head high. The gossip and judgment were small prices to pay for the freedom and peace I now had. Meanwhile, David's downfall continued. 
His pride had taken a significant hit, and his once spotless reputation was now tarnished. I heard from mutual acquaintances that he had moved back in with his parents, a fact he tried to keep hidden but eventually seeped out. Rachel's situation was no better. Her meddling in our marriage had alienated her from many of her friends. The once inseparable siblings were now barely on speaking terms, their relationship strained by blame and regret. As for me, I found solace in the support of my family. My brother Michael moved closer to us, and his presence was a constant source of comfort. My parents doted on Lily, their love for her a balm to the wounds of the past. One day, while sipping coffee in my kitchen, I reflected on the journey I had taken, the pain, the struggle, the liberation. It had all led me to this moment of tranquility. I had not only survived, I had emerged stronger, more self-assured. The doorbell rang, pulling me from my thoughts. I opened the door to find David standing there, a look of defeat on his face. Evelyn, I'm sorry. I didn't realize what I had until it was gone. His apology, though late, was a validation of my decision. Thank you, David. I said, not unkindly, but it's too late. I've moved on. As I closed the door on David and the life we once shared, I felt a sense of closure. The chapter of my life that he had been a part of was over, and a new chapter was beginning. A chapter where I was the author of my own story, free to write my future as I saw fit. Lily's voice called out from the living room, bringing a smile to my face. I walked towards her, ready to embrace the life that lay ahead. A life full of possibilities and hope.